So in the previous video, we talked about creating comps or creating comps special and the differences between those two. We left off with being able to bring in additional versions from comp scripts that may have been saved. Now we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the versioning system. So basically what's happening when you have another version come in is kind of doing a round trip between say comp and Nuke Studio or here over whatever you might be using. It's automatically allowing you to bring in those new versions that may have been created or saved in comp. So as these versions are saved or these shots are getting worked on in comp and they're getting saved, then you'll have access to those renders directly in the timeline here for review. So as I mentioned in the previous video, you can change versions or select versions by pressing the V on the keyboard. You can select your versions that way. Or you can use the Alt up and down arrow keys with the shot selected to cycle through the different versions. Alt up there, Alt down. If you know there's additional versions in here, but you're not seeing any, what you can do is scan for versions. I know I purposely set this green so I know this one has other versions available. They may have already been imported. Let's just take a look and see. Right click, go to version, scan for versions. If they haven't been imported, then they will be. Okay, so it did, it found two new versions. Great. So if we look at that now, you can do that for any, any of the shots that you know have additional versions. You can select multiple at once, scan for versions, and it's gonna scan for the latest versions of those. So going back to this one, I can see I have two other versions in here available to me. So what I'm actually gonna do is, we'll open this up in the bin. We'll find that particular clip. Made it green so it stands out a little bit easier. And what we can do from the bin now is we can view the different versions through here. So this can only happen through the bin. You can't do it through the timeline. So you have to make sure you have it selected in the bin, right click, and then open in, open in version bin. So it's gonna show you different versions for you here. One of the things that you can do with these, now is you can actually color these be different colors so that we know maybe status of these versions. We'll set this one, maybe we'll set this one to red because we don't really want to use it. Red's usually a color that says, oh, don't use. Okay, so we'll use that one. Maybe the one that we want to use is this one. It's good to go, so we'll, we'll color this one green. And we can leave this as maybe an intermediate one. We'll color that a yellow. So these are all our versions available to us in our versions bin for this particular shot that we have selected or this clip. If I were to, once again, press V on the keyboard now, you can see these. Clips have been colored, so you have an idea of which clip you should be working with. Maybe this green one. Now, if for any instance, say this was a split shot or a split clip, take this copy, and we'll just paste it at the end of the timeline down here. So we'll go to the end, paste. So now we have that same shot, maybe split at different frame ranges on the same track here. What we can do is if I were to go back into my project bin here, we now have this option. We can see by this little tiny icon right here, this little link. So we can link our versions to either the bin or to our timeline. So what that means is currently nothing should be linked to this. If we go take a look at this, we'll go to version. Yeah, so everything's unlinked at the moment. Meaning that if I were to version this up in my bin, remember alt up arrow key or alt down, It'll change the version in here for us, but it leaves these untouched in the timeline. Now, for any reason, I want to kind of drive these version changes by my project bin item. What I can do, once again, right click, go to version and link all. So link all the clips that it's linked to. You notice that these automatically changed now to the version I had in my bin. If I change versions in my bin here, I'll do alt down arrow key. See it change there. Green color helps with that. Go down one more. Change to once again. Now we can also have, you know, this shot independent of these ones over here. If we want to leave this at a version yellow and then we want to change this to the version green being driven by this, we can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is make sure we're all unlinked here. Unlink selected. And then go back. Version link selected to Let's track item, use track version. Now when I change this, being driven by the track item. Okay. If we go back up here, unlink all, 
Now nothing's connected. Maybe we just want to link this one to the bin version while this one is unlinked to any of them. That way I can change this in the bin version. Uh, let's go alt down arrow. You'll notice that the bin version changed along with this linked item in the track while this one remained this version unaffected because it's unlinked to the bin version or to the track. So if we change this independently of itself, I can change this back down. You'll see it's linked to the bin version while this is independent. And should I want them all connected to the same version? I'll just select this one, go to version link selected. Now, if I want this to match the bin version, they're all linked together, I can use the bin version. Otherwise, if I use track item version, it's going to take this current version and apply it to everything else. So we'll use that and we'll see how that works. So now this is driving the rest of those. Okay, so that was just a video about the version system inside of the timeline and how you can choose from different versions by either pressing V on the keyboard and selecting that version or using the Alt up and down arrow keys or you can select multiple shots and scan for additional versions if there's any additional versions you know that are going to be coming in. Scan for those versions. And then how you can version link between bin items and track items. So that way you can either drive the bin item to version up your track items or your track items drive version that up or independent. And how you can link your bin items to your track items for further versioning control over your shots. And that's about as far as we'll take this project. So we've really come a long way since the beginning. At this point, you know, you just distribute these shots to your comp artist. The comp artist would be working on them, saving them. They'd be coming back into the timeline here. You can review the, their work through the timeline for reviews. Once all these shots are set and approved, then you can export this sequence out for final link. So hopefully you have some base information or knowledge on how Nuke Studio works and functions, enough that you can get your own projects up and running. Be sure to check out our videos on using Nuke Studio or Hero for a review. They go a little bit further in depth on some of the stuff we've talked about throughout this series. That'll conclude this series. If you have any further questions, please reference the user guide or go to learn.foundry.com for further information. Thank you for watching.